break down the Logic Pro session of the song you just previewed called Here Comes the Fall. We'll walk through what it took to make this song happen. If you want to hear the full version of how this song turned out, I'll include a link in the description below so you can reference that afterwards or along the way. Diving right in here, let's take a look at the intro. And the goal here was really just setting the tone of the song. So as we listen back to this, we'll see a pretty simple intro. <laughs> And the parts that we're dealing with here, we have a lead synth and a very simple just hi-hat drum part there. And on the synth, I'm using Contax MK2, the Retro Machines, and I'm sure I started with some preset and then I tweaked it along the way to get the sound that I'm going for. The main things that I'll point out here for what I was designing was having a little bit of that echo so that it's kind of trailing off on each of those hits and having a sharp release so that it's cutting off kind of abruptly but then still trailing with the echo. And then on the notes that we played in there, the main thing I'll point out here is that they're not um, perfectly quantized and that they, I left the release points as whatever I played them in as. So it's going to sound a little more natural, especially on the release. And I liked the kind of abrupt but still bouncy echo that's happening after each note. On the drums, I'm just using a battery kit, the In the House kit. And we're just using the hi-hat right now in, in the intro, just a closed and open hi-hat. After the introduction, we're introducing two new parts, the lead vocal and a bass. So let's hear that as it hits. I can still remember going to the bar so drunk that I danced real well. I can still remember screaming every... And we're just playing this sort of bouncy, carefree sound and bass. I'll solo that here. And again, we're using uh, Retro Machines MK2 here from Native Instruments and starting with the sub bass and again, tweaking it for the exact sound that we wanted to get out of it. The other treatment I'm using on that bass is um, a dynamic multiband EQ. So we can see that it's taking out some of the low end there that I don't really want to be as overpowering as I thought it was in the beginning. And then we're cutting down some of the low end again with an EQ at the end of the plugin chain. On the vocal, let me take a look here. All of the vocals that we're going to look at today have already been, uh, by the time you're seeing them here, they've already been edited with takes, so comping them to get just the best takes for each phrase or syllable or however <laughs> detailed I got there, and then editing out any clicks or noise, using usually using isotopes, denoising tools, and then uh, tuned as well using Melodyne. So... After all of that, we're running it through the plugin chain here that is pretty standard for my setup, and then I'll walk through some of the changes along the way to match this specific song. So one of those being the first vocal here, I have I can still remember fairly dry the compared to what we'll see in the chorus in a little bit. On the buses here, you can see that I have a short reverb, long reverb, slap delay, ping pong delay, parallel widening, which is... Uh, just like a doubler and an imager to spread it out. So just a wider vocal that I have in the background and another delay. And then in the verse, again, it's pretty dry, just some of that short verb and the slap delay. And then we'll introduce some of the longer reverbs later in the song. The B part of the verse here will introduce a new vocal melody and a new synth part just to build the tension going into the chorus. So let's hear that part hit here. Wrote them all, but now I'm feeling old. The cold is growing in. My So you can hear that synth is coming in there. The way we have that set up is, again, using Contact MK2, but this time it's a different sound design, and then I have the arpeggiator tool on here. So when I go to the ARP settings, you can see I've messed around with the grid here until I got the right bounce that I wanted, and it's set to jump 
up between three octaves, and I kept it pretty short so that it's that choppy sound that we're getting. The note that you'll see is just one note that it's playing throughout it. So the way I did that was just wanting to keep it kind of standing still but feeling like it's moving around. I felt like that went along well with the idea of the song and also just built tension leading into that chorus. And then when the chorus hits, we're introducing quite a few new elements. So let's hear it hit and then we'll walk through the different parts. Aim is hard to buy and here comes the fall. Suddenly the leaves turn yellow and my sleeves got long. Great. So starting with the drums, we have multiple new drum pieces added. So let's just solo that drum bus and hear it. So the main components here, we've added the kick and the snare in that battery kit. So you can see those hitting. And then we've layered those with other snare or snap sounds uh, on top of the, the snare and the clap and the battery kit. So here we have audio that I have running through microphaser, uh, reverb, and EQ to filter out anything except that kind of mid-range that's going through here. And that's gonna add some length and depth to those snare and clap hits. So, and we'll see that they're, instead of just having them all in one track, I treat them all slightly differently. And the hits we're using are, the way I'm getting some movement between those hits are the same hit, and then the first one is tuned an octave down. Second one's gonna be at its normal pitch. And then I have a different sound entirely there. And then we're ending with a less reverby snap here. So you can see this one's gonna be dry and it's gonna kind of cut through the reverb layers from the other ones. So just listening to those four layers that we added on top, let's hear that. And then with the rest of it. Another piece we're introducing in that chorus is the bass. So we'll see the bass bus here. Let's hear that hitting. And this is quite a transition from the kind of happy-go-lucky sounding bass over there. And it's going to this swelling, deep, gritty bass that we have uh, hitting in that chorus. So the way that we've designed that, I have it on two different tracks with a little bit of a different melody towards the end of it on the higher part. Um, but the parts are split into a low and high. It's uh, basically the same, except again, that little melody at the end, and then a uh, and then one of them just being tuned an octave up. So the design of those, let's pull up contact again. So we're using a sub bass again with some different settings here and both of them running through similar plugin chains, except the higher one, I'm pushing through a bit crusher as well. And that's going to let uh, both the bit crusher and decapitator are going to push a lot of that sizzliness on the top end, and we're going to let the low bass handle more of that punch that we want on the low end of the sound spectrum there. So hearing those both individually, and then I'll layer them up together again. So that lets me get the best of both worlds there on the low end and that sizzly high end, helping it punch through the mix. The other piece here that I'm doing is the swelling sound that we're hearing is done manually using gain automation. So when we're listening back this time, just watch that automation curve. And that's using the gain plugin at the end of each of our plugin chains here. And that's going to be corresponding to what you're hearing on that swelling. You can hear it. That's where I let the high one poke through longer and just cut the low end off at the end of each of those phrases. The other big difference leading into the chorus is the overall width that we're hearing. And we're going from that fairly narrow mix in the verse, and then it's really opening up wide in the chorus. And some of the ways that we're doing that 
are by introducing some new synths that have more stereo image to them and also starting to pan some of those parts left and right. So let's listen back to the synth so you can hear the new layers that we're adding in and building out that texture and width for the chorus. And here we're leaving lots of space for that bass on the low end, so you can see it's not really gonna conflict too much there on the low end. We're still getting some of the swelling sound, but this time, instead of doing the more detailed automation on the like we did on the bass, on the big square one here, I'll solo that. I'm using a tremolo to sort of act as a sidechain compressor there. And it's ducking it out on each of those half notes. And then looking down at the other parts, we have our lead synth still, and we're layering that with the quick ARP setting that we had from the pre-chorus or the B part to that verse, and then another uh, synth added on the uh, that synth buzzy ARP. And on the synth buzzy ARP, you can see we're still doing the swelling, but then we're also bouncing it back and forth left right with a more traditional tremolo setting here. And then let's listen to that lead synth line here, which we just have playing a different melody, but it's the same setting that we had in the intro and verse. Another new piece we're adding on that chorus are the acoustic guitars. So we'll solo that. So those are hitting on the first note, but it's also ducking out at the same time. So on that acoustic guitar bus, we see that tremolo setting, and it's that's what's making that kind of duck out at the main hit for each of the quarter notes. So if I turn that off just to let you know what that sounds like, and then back on. So I just thought that went well with the overall sound and let the vocals punch through since they're hitting on that first note too. The acoustics that I'm using here, I just recorded the same part twice and then panned it far left and right. So again, it's adding to that wide feeling going into the chorus and just really helps bring that stereo image out. And now let's look at the vocals as that chorus hits. So we're doing lots of layering here with vocals to get an extra big feel going into it. So let's listen back to that. And here comes the fall Suddenly the leaves turned yellow And my sleeves got long I missed it all So we have our main lead vocal here Running through basically the same plug-in chain That we had on the verse With a few different settings along the way And then you can see already That it's a much wetter vocal With more reverb and delay Thrown on through those send knobs So uh, just soloing that lead vocal here uh, and I'll, I'll play a little bit of the verse so you can hear the difference as it hits. Todd to buy and here comes the fall. Suddenly the leaves turned yellow and my sleeves got long. Um... So not only is it just more reverb being affected as the bass starting point for it, but we're also using some delay and reverb throws. So using my automation curves here, you can see that I'm hitting a reverb at the last phrase of that, or the last word of that first phrase, and then hitting it hard at the very beginning of that phrase. So when we're listening back, let's hear that first phrase kind of get drawn out underneath the vocal and a little bit of the delay on that last syllable as well. So let's hear it. Here comes the fall, suddenly the leaves turned yellow. So hopefully you heard that just fill in some of the gaps of the vocal and just add another texture underneath. And that's just with the one lead vocal. After that, we have a couple other parts layered under it. So we have a lot of our doubles added here. So we have one double down the middle. We have two panned far left and right. And then another one uh, added, not quite as far panned, but still left and right. So hearing those all together, this is gonna help bring some width to it. 
And you can hear I'm singing that at a different octave as well, so it's layering it up, keeping the same melody, but just adding another texture since it's a different placement of my voice and just filling out the overall sound. Underneath that, we also have some doubles added just on the specific phrases, and I just felt that that helped punch through even harder on those first phrases and, and really kick in harder once the chorus is hitting. After that, we have some harmonies added. So looking at the background vocals, we'll just solo those. Here comes the fall. So we have a lower harmony added underneath, which I put in the center just to kind of ground everything a little more. And then we have some really high harmonies added next, and those are all panned far left and right. Those are also only hitting on the individual phrases. So in addition to helping it punch, it also creates a nice little um, kind of question and answer setup between that first phrase and then the second phrase that's relegated back to the, the main lead vocal melody there. So hearing those all together again, let's solo that along with this other bus. I am comes the fall suddenly the and then it leaves alternates to that main melody got long. Um, and then in the second half of the chorus we have this other bus added in which we're treating more as a crowd vocal so let's listen to that and walk through how we made it darkness is a bummer no. I know it's wrong, so it's sort of this but... no protest to uh, darkness being a bummer and that is done instead of treating each individual vocal like we did with all the other harmonies and the lead vocals. I'm instead, I'm kind of imagining it like if you're miking a group of people, you wouldn't have all of them miked individually usually. You're trying to get more of like a choral or chanty sound out of it. So I just have the raw vocals on their own tracks with no treatment on those individual tracks. And then I'm just affecting the group of all of those. So it's a stereo bus with all of those individual tracks going up to it. And then we're running it through these as stereo plugins here. We're also, the other big difference is we're pushing the decapitator, a distortion plugin, harder here to give it that grittier sound. So, in the context of the mix, you'll hear it played back here. Darkness is a bummer. So you can see it sounds way more aggressive when I just had it soloed versus in that mix. The distortion kind of puts it more in that chanty feel when it's in the total mix, but it sounds a little too aggressive almost when you're listening to it on its own. So just a good kind of thing to notice when you're soloing and unsoloing tracks is, um, you know, make sure it fits the total mix and don't optimize just for that track on its own because nobody's hearing that track on its own. <laughs> unless you're watching a breakdown of it like this. All right, so that brings us to verse two. And at this point, I wanted to make sure that the song felt like it was picking up in intensity and pace without actually increasing the tempo of the song. So a couple ways that I did that were introducing new parts to it and also uh, adjusting some of the effects that I had on existing parts. So let's go ahead and listen to that and break it down. Now I still pretend I loved it when it got so hot that my pits got stained. I'm always sleep. So starting with the drum bus, you can hear that we have the kick and snare in this mix as opposed to just that hi-hat from the first verse. So you'll hear the kick and snare added to the hi-hat part. So already that's bringing up some of the intensity. And then at the beginning of that second verse, we have a synth part added in, in addition to the lead synth line that we were working with. So let's just solo that. And this is again using contact with a different starting point and having a little longer release and the sound here, again, dipping out on the quarter notes using that tremolo trick that we walked through earlier. And it's just following a pretty simple uh, melody line there, just following along with the bass, which will kick in later in that verse. The other piece that we added in is an acoustic guitar part. So listening back here, we'll listen to this finger-picked acoustic guitar. And we're starting this with uh, an EQ sweep down where 
it's letting more punch through at the very first couple words. So you can kind of hear that first bright acoustic part and then it cuts out so that it's more of a background piece. So that's gonna get out of the way of the vocal while also still just letting the listener know that it's there as it peeks through at the very beginning. And let's hear that just without the EQ at all so you can hear the difference. And then layer it out in the mix. So I can hide the shame cause now I'm feeling dumb. And right at that part, you heard another synth kick in, just a little transition piece added between the A and B parts of the second verse here. So a similar setting to the one that we're using that kicked in in the chorus here, but one that's a little bouncier and just a cool little fill that uh, transitions well into that B part of the verse. Over on the vocals, we have uh, the same, I'm using the same track that we had in verse one, but I'm changing a few things here. So on my automation view, you can see I'm increasing the distortion mix on that decapitator plugin. So it's gonna be a grittier vocal. And then I'm also introducing some more other effects. So we're increasing the reverb there. We're increasing the starting point for the uh, slap delay. So everything is getting a little more affected as a vocal. And this is partly because it's sitting in a denser mix and I wanted it to feel fuller as part of it. Um, and then also you can see it changes as it leads into that second chorus. So as we listen back, it's getting more affected as it progresses. And at the end, I'm actually using the decapitator sort of like a riser by increasing the distortion percentage there, the dry wet knob, so that it's building in to that chorus hit. So I'll just pull the decapitator up so you can hear that. And at the same time that that's happening, we're also doing a similar kind of riser type effect with the EQ on the guitar. So while we dipped it out during the verse, we're rising it up there at the end, kind of sweeping it up to open up into the chorus. And then same thing over on the synth with the cutoff knob in contact. So all of those are happening going into the chorus. And let's hear it in the mix here, and then I'll solo the vocal just so you can hear the difference as it hits. Head is cloudy too, it's cool and comes the fall, And just the vocal so you can hear that distortion increase. Try to work some more, but my head is cloudy too, it's cool and So you can hear that get grittier along the way, and I just felt like that really helped kind of rise up into the chorus and uh, provided a nice little transition that isn't a uh, riser, which I would probably also add in. And maybe I, maybe I did, let's see. Yeah, I also added a riser there um, as the crash, but it just adds another texture that's still building and increasing in intensity and helps build the anticipation going into that chorus. So on the second chorus, again, I tried to layer it so that it's getting bigger each time. So on this second one compared to the first chorus, I'm introducing a new little drum part here. So just another little part that's filling in some gaps on the percussion side and making it feel a little more energetic. And then on the bass part here, the automation curve is a little bit different. So I'm not actually hitting on that first note like I did in the first chorus, which you can see over here. And instead we're swelling from that first note. On the synths, you'll see that we're adding a, another synth layer here. So let's just solo that so you can hear it. So just a little lower synth part added to kind of fill in some of the mids or low mids there and build out the texture as it's going along. And then on the acoustic guitars, I'm introducing a strummed acoustic part here, which is panned a little bit to the right as another uh, layer here. And you can hear that still running through the tremolo that's dipping things out on each quarter note. In the vocals, we have a few new parts added in. So in addition to everything we reviewed from the first chorus, we have this new response part added after each phrase here. So let's hear that piece. Here comes the fall. 
And in the context of the mix, you can hear it come right after that first phrase. So I'll just do the main vocal boss and that answer part. Cool. So it's just coming in at a little bit of a delay from when the first phrase hits and fills in a little bit of gap there, provides a little more energy just by having some overlaid vocals. Great. And then for the bridge, I wanted to create a lot of contrast here going into the bridge. So let's listen to that as it hits. It's the summer. So this is going from that really luscious sounding chorus into a pretty abrupt sounding bridge at the very beginning at least. So uh, hitting that bridge, I'm introducing some more hip hop oriented drums, especially the hi-hat and this sort of hay bus that I called it, which is the uh, little hay sounds hat here. So the production on this is a little more aggressive sounding between that and the bass, which is a more traditional 808 sounding bass. So hearing those together. And that's really making up the core of what we're getting in that bridge. So it's sort of this... Um, airy feeling from that initial crash with reverb here hitting and then we're hitting that with some abrupt and aggressive drums on top of it for a nice contrast between that um, kind of reverb openness from the crash hit and then those more aggressive drums and bass. Making up those drum sounds are still using the battery kit here with um, just some different kicks hitting and then the hi-hats being added in, we're cutting out most of the low end and just leaving those up in the higher frequency range. And we're layering that with some other little clicks that are also, uh, you can see EQ'd out so that it's mostly just some of the upper mids and uh, high range coming through. And then a little click effect here with some more distortion and a chorus effect to widen it out. So hearing just these layers, you'll hear uh, kind of that upper range being added there. In addition to that, we're using this hey bus, and just like the no bus that we looked at earlier, we have the vocals just raw on these individual tracks, and then we're affecting just the bus layer, and then we're hitting it pretty hard with Decapitator, using a noise gate to get that abrupt kind of cutoff sound, and then we have a channel EQ here so that it's really just some of the mid-range going through and leaving that low and high end free for uh, both the vocal and hi-hat and the bass parts. So listening back to those all together with the entire drum bus. And then the bass that we're using is starting from the, one of the 808s in Logic, and we're running that through EQ to bring up some of the mid highs there so that it punches through a little bit, hitting it with Decapitator to get some more grit on it, along with Bit Crusher further down in that plugin chain. The other bases that we've added in, so that those 808s are going to be the first hits that we're hearing. And then we're hitting it with a, another layer of bass, which we're layering with lows and highs, just like we did in the chorus earlier. And these are using some subs from Contact from that Retro Machines again. And these are also being run through Decapitator just like we did with all our other basses and hitting it extra hard there on the high one to get that sizzly sound. So uh, hearing those, the other main component that's getting it that sound that I want is this uh, glide setting so that it's giving you that slidey sound between notes as it's going. So the bass all together there provides this really cool traditional 808 sound that hits and then kind of stutters in there with the MK2 and then hits it with the more slidey melody there. We're also getting this really different sound from our synths being extra choppy by gating them with the drums. So let's hear that back. Hey. 
in those synths, if I don't play the uh, gate that I'm using on it, so let's go over here and take the gate off. There's a lot of uh, reverb tail and just release tail on those different synth sounds that we've added in. And by adding the gates, so I'll turn those back on here, you can hear it gets way more aggressive, and I'll also need to solo the kick here at least, um, so that it, uh, because it's the kick that's driving these gates, allowing the synth sound through. So you can see on my gate, I'm actually side chaining that to the kick, and let's hear it back. So a very cool choppy sound that we've added in, much different than just having the synths layered with the longer tails. And I just thought that was a really cool contrast from the crash that we're getting uh, to lead into the bridge and just made it sound even more aggressive um, in, in that bridge overall. For the vocal layers in the bridge, let's take a look at those. Similar treatment to our other vocals, and you can just hear those layered in. Got the past, got the past, got the past on a pedestal. The main thing that I'll point out here are some of the vocal effects that we're using, along with the way that we've layered them and the different delivery of those vocals. So instead of just the normal doubles that we added before, I have these, I labeled them rough doubles here, so they're gonna sound like a grittier delivery. Let's listen back to that. Got the past, got the past, got the past on a pedestal. So it's kind of this atonal, um, more just raspy sounding vocal panned left and right to add a little bit of a kind of crackly sound to the vocal and, and bringing it wider. The other piece that I've added here is almost how I would do doubles with a rap or hip hop song here where it's just doubling a couple different words and shouting them. So let's hear that. Pass, pass, pass. And again, those are panned far left and right. And then when we're listening to them all together, it's creating more punchiness and just aggressiveness to that overall vocal sound, even though the vocal got the itself pass, got the pass, got the pass on a pedestal. is kind of this airy indie pop vocal. The vocal effects that we're using on this uh, lead vocal here in the bridge is a kind of weird delay at the end of the phrase, which I'll point out, and then a really long delay that we're hitting at the beginning of the phrase. So let's listen back to that now that you see where those are on the automation curve, and then just listen for where those uh, delay hits or delay throws are hitting. Got the past, got the past, got the past on a pedestal. The so that pedestal delay hitting here is from that weird delay bus. And then the longer kind of ringing sound that you're getting is actually from this eighth delay here. Uh, let's go ahead and find that. There it is. And that's a really high feedback delay that I've set up here to an eighth note with some deviation on it. And that's what's kind of increasing in ringing sound as, as it goes on. Pass, got the pass, got the pass that little sound. So the third chorus, I know I said earlier I was trying to kind of build up the song and build up intensity along the way, but on the third chorus I actually drop it to a softer chorus leading in and then finish the second half of the chorus throwing in all the bells and whistles here. So let's hear the transition going from the bridge into that softer chorus and then walk through what we're doing to get that sound. Better things. comes to fall. Suddenly the leaves turn yellow and my sleeves got long. So the first thing I'll point out is the drum bus. We're actually keeping some of that more hip hop oriented drum kit with the hi-hats and the haze. Again, this is just a cool contrast that I thought it was just standing out against the softer vocal and sort of not what you might expect to go along with that fully soft chorus. The transition into that drop is Again, using a couple of risers in the drum bus section, but then it's also using the bass in a couple of different ways. So one, we're hitting a sub hit from Contacts, I think rise and hit here. Yep, so we're using a really deep hit sound. So I'll just solo that. So really low end frequency spectrum there. Um, should be coming through on subs as sort of just this deeper impact leading into that chorus. 
And then I'm also doing a few things on the bass part to, um, it, you can see the melody here is dropping down. So it's going to give this kind of feeling of like an off button as it kind of powers down. That's the kind of feeling I get from it. So that, that little bass sound there is kind of turning off everything that we had going on in the bridge and then letting it soften up as it uh, goes into that third chorus. The synth sounds, we have a few parts here, but a couple of them are cut out using automation. So you can see just that um, the, the B part synth where it's just the single note bouncing around on the arpeggiator. We're keeping that. And then we're adding this little woodblock piece here at a higher pitch. That along with, I'll also talk about the acoustic guitars here because it kind of goes along with the feeling in this part. We have a little guitar part here doing a similar, um, just nice little anticipation building piece leading into the drop. So let's hear those. So just the woodblock piece, that's where it's getting the kind of spacey um, sound. And then we're getting this acoustic layered in. Still hitting it with the tremolo where it's cutting out each of those quarter notes. And then we have that same arpeggiated synth part here that's bouncing around at a single note, but this time also uh, jumping up whenever the guitar part also jumps up there to the other note. The other piece that we're treating differently here is the lead vocal on that soft chorus. So the first thing to point out on the vocal is the delivery of it. So I tried to deliver it with a little less chest voice and keep it a little headier and add a little more breath to it. So that in addition to, so you can see it's dried up more like the first verse was. So a little more than the first verse had, but still much drier than the chorus vocal that we looked at. So when I play that back, you can hear the difference. <laughs> comes the fall suddenly the leaves turned yellow and my sleeves got long i missed it all and then we that add that chestiness to it at the, the end here. so add some power as it drops into that final chorus so hearing that transition you can hear the uh, vocal build and then a couple other pieces build into that drop so let's listen back to that walk through the little transition and then all the bells and whistles were thrown in on that last chorus part so the other transition piece is this little bass part added on the high distortion, uh, the, the higher octave bass line, and just soloing that. So we're leading that into the last chorus instead of just leaving it out and, and hitting on the first note. The drum pieces here, we have pretty much everything thrown in that we'd had before. So we're layering that more hip hop oriented hi-hat collection along with some of the clicky sounds that we've layered with some more longer crashes. And finally, this uh, set of vocal chops that we've set up. So hearing just that drum bus, and then I'll break down the vocal chops. So looking at those vocal chops, these were from the chorus, and then I just kind of mangled them, changing the pitch of them, and with some distortion until they got to this cool place uh, that, that I layered into the percussion section. So listening just to those. So these were, uh, I bounced them down at some point, so I think I'll... Uh, I won't be able to show it directly. Yeah, but these were, um, at some point, they were pitched down, pitched up, and then pitched kind of extra down for that last hit. And they're also running through um, Decapitator really hard. You can see it's almost all the way up on the wet knob, and the punish setting is on there. And then uh, same thing here. And we're also adding this chorus effect to add some width and uh, just another kind of thing to separate it from it just being a normal little vocal at it. Scrolling down to the synths here, we'll take a look at the layers that we've included for that final part of the chorus where we have 
um, really everything that we had before along with this little section here. So I'll solo just the new synth line. So again, we're using that MK2 with a slightly different setting, keeping it in the higher frequency range, uh, using some higher pitch notes, and then running it through Bit Crusher and Decapitator, and then running it through Tremolo here to get a little more bouncing back and forth to eighth triplets. On the acoustic guitars, we're also layering a couple other acoustic pieces in. So we introduced the strumming on that second chorus. We introduced that higher picking part on the... Uh, softer part of the third chorus and then now we're introducing this higher strummed part here still running through that tremolo and then Underneath that, we have all of our vocals where we are throwing everything else at it. So in addition to the answer lines that we had added in that second chorus, we're also introducing a couple uh, overlay parts, which we'll solo here first just to point out what's happening, and then we'll hear them in context of the mix. So... On the overlaid root part here, uh, this is just a cool little part with, you can see it's got some reverb directly on it this time, and we're sending it to a new crystal bus, which is what I'm calling it, where I'm pitching it up, I think two octaves, and then running it through Bit Crusher, and then just letting most of the high end come through on that bus. So that's getting that kind of shimmery sound above it, and we're doing that on both of these, panned left and right. And then these two parts are just overlaid melodies with some, some longer drawn out notes to provide a little bit of um, just another layer happening behind the, the lead. So let's hear all of those together here to see how the vocals all fit for that final build in. All around the world, darkness is a bummer. No. I know it's wrong. And then after that last chorus, we're just ending with a softer outro using a little technique I'm pulling from probably high school English class called framing. We're just trying to end the song in a similar way to how it started. So just toning it back to that lead synth that we started with, the hi-hat part that we started with, and really the only difference is adding that little acoustic strum at the very end there. So after all the production pieces and arrangement that we saw here, now let's take a look at the mastering chain that we used. So just pulling that up, I'll uh, simplify the group view just for <laughs> viewing it more easily. But uh, over here, we have our stereo out bus, and then we're starting with two EQs where we're cutting out most of the low end here that most people won't be able to hear on their speakers anyway, and just making sure that none of it clutters up our headroom and mix. After that, I'm using Supercharger, a compressor from Native Instruments, and keeping it fairly dry, but just uh, kind of compressing it a little bit and mixing it in with the more dynamic signals. Let's go to a loud part here to see that in action and just take a look at it. So going down maybe three or four dB, and then again, still keeping it only 8% wet there on the wet dry knob. After that, I'm using Isotopes Trash 2 to add some saturation to this mix. So I uh, have it set with just some settings I've come up with over time uh, across three different frequency bands, mostly using, um, I think it's, what is it, tape saturation on the bottom two, and then a gentle push on the top, and having that end up at about 50% wet. I've also tweaked the drive and all those settings for each of those to get the right 
sound coming out of it. So I know there are lots of other uh, saturation plugins that may be better suited for mastering. <laughs> this is just what I had when I was um, starting on my mastering chain and ended up with something I liked. So you can definitely use something else. I know another popular one is Saturn out there. Uh, I haven't tried it yet, but I would love to. And the last plugin on our chain is the Pro L2 from FabFilter. And this is our limiter that we're bringing everything up to commercial level loudness with. So I have it on the modern setting and I've mastered it so that it's about minus nine dB at the loudest part of the song for short term loudness. I also have the output set to minus one dB. So going to the part of this song where it goes from that soft chorus to the drop, let's hear that back and see the limiter in action. Leaves turned yellow and my sleeves got long. And you could see the softer chorus was really just hitting on a couple of the percussion parts, hitting that limiter threshold, and then more of those hits are hitting that threshold once the rest of the chorus drops in. So that allows the softer part of the chorus to remain you know, just gain boosted, but not limited for the most part. And then once that chorus hits, it's uh, bringing everything up and starting to cap things. And this was a balance that I felt good about for this song. I hope you enjoyed this session breakdown today. And if you liked what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel here. I'm Marcus of Cradle Cat, and I'll see you next time.